Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friend. Welcome to the middle of the week here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for being part of the broadcast today. Uh, This is a Bible study time, so get your Bible open as mind sits open to the book of Titus and chapter 3. Titus chapter 3, along with getting your Bible open, also get something on which you can jot some notes. You see, today we're getting into chapter 3 in earnest. I will be giving some outline uh, formats here that will guide us through the study of the third chapter. I think that may be a help to you. So get your Bible, get something on which you can jot some notes. But also I've got a gospel tract in my hand. Now, if you listen to the broadcast very much at all, you know I always talk about gospel tracts. So let me ask, do you know what a gospel tract is? We have been for 80 years publishing gospel tracts, giving them away free of charge, even paying the shipping all over the world. That really is our motto. That's our mission statement. Our mission statement says this, taking the word of God to all the world, 80 years and counting. Well, next year, it'll be 81 years and counting. Friend, God has been so faithful to us, and he's used people like you. But I want to give you some gospel tracts, and I'll say more about that here in just a moment. But let us lead into our Bible study time this way. Do you have a healthy lifestyle? A healthy lifestyle. Now, most of the time, when you hear that question asked of you, you expect the one doing the asking to follow up with more questions like, tell me about your diet, tell me about your exercise, how much sleep do you get at night, and so on. These are great questions. And since the Bible says our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in us, we ought to take care and be concerned about the health of our body. But we're studying the book of Titus, and I want to ask about your spiritual lifestyle and my spiritual lifestyle. Is your lifestyle and mine, is it healthy? Does our relationship with Jesus Christ have an impact on our daily lifestyle? And it should. You know that, and I know that. But what in the world does a healthy lifestyle of a believer look like? Well, chapter 3 of Titus is going to give us uh, some major answers to that question. I hope as we start it today that you can listen today and other days as well. Before I begin to read the opening verses of Titus chapter 3, I want to talk about the track that is my in my hand. Now, a gospel track is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. We publish over 40 different gospel tracts. Each one tells the same gospel message, just coming at it from a different vantage point. The track in my hand right now is entitled, Seriously Speaking. Seriously Speaking. The subtitle is, You May Be Sincerely Wrong. There's a lot of people who like to speak seriously about spiritual things, and they sound very informed, but they're sincerely wrong because their ideas about spiritual life, their idea about how to live for Christ is based upon man's idea, not found based upon the Word of God. This gospel tract, seriously speaking, confronts people who may be churchgoers or spiritual people, but yet do not know Christ as Savior. Oh, friend, you can be very spiritual, but not be saved. You can be very spiritual, but not have the sin stained removed from your soul. Here's a great gospel tract, seriously speaking that will bring all that to light and clearly lay out God's plan of having the sin stain and the condemnation of our sin taken off your life and you be given everlasting life. At the end of the broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on and give you three ways by which you can contact us. Have pen and paper ready to jot that down, or you can just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. Now, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. And friend, if you're looking for a way to impact 
not only your nation, but around the world, consider helping support the ministry of Bible Tracks. We're reaching people literally around the world. If your Bible is open there to Titus chapter 3, here are what the opening two verses say. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. We'll stop right there for today. If you were listening on Monday, I took the last verse of chapter 2, that's verse 15 there, and these opening two verses together. And my point was on Monday to let us know what God expects of a pastor when he stands before people holding the Word of God. The pastors are to speak God's truth. Now, my title for this entire study of the book of Titus is this, Growing Healthy Churches in Unholy Ground. Titus's job here, Titus was given the job to finish getting the local churches there on the island of Crete, getting them established. And so to help do that, Paul, the apostle, wrote Titus this letter. In chapter one, you'll find out that a local church to be well-established needs healthy leaders. Then in chapter two, a healthy church needs healthy lay people. But here now in chapter three, we're going to learn that a healthy church needs to have a healthy lifestyle being practiced by the believers. I have divided chapter three up into five sections. Here they are, one through five. You ready? Verses one and two talks about our civil life, our civil life. Notice the C word there, civil. I've got four more words all beginning with the letter C. Here they are. Number two, based upon verses three to seven, we're going to see our converted life. That's verses three to seven. Thirdly, verses eight and nine, we will see our cross-cultural life. Number four, verses 10 and 11, we'll see our confronting life, what happens when believers don't walk correctly. And then lastly, verses 12 to 15, that I've titled our companion life, our companion life. But come back here to verses one and two. Chapter three opens with a command. Verse one reads this, put them in mind or charge the believers to remember. It's a command. That was the role that the pastor and, frankly, the total ministry of a local church was to have. Local churches are to remind the saints not only that they are saved, but churches remind the saints that where we are living, we are not living in heaven yet. Now, no matter what country you are living in, no matter what local area you might reside in, believers live within a society. They live under governmental leaders, and they live around lost people. We all need to be reminded how our salvation is to impact and affect how we live in the society in which we are found. It doesn't matter whether you were born in France and you moved to some other country. It doesn't matter whether you were born in the United States and became a missionary to some other country. These things work for people, all believers, no matter their society. But verses 1 and 2 not only tell us the role of the pastor and the church, these verses tell us the pointed responsibilities of believers and that they have while they're living in the society that around them. To the governmental leaders at every level, believers are to live under the authority of those leaders. That's why verse 1 says, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers. Those words, principalities and powers, simply refer to the different levels or ranks of human authorities. One practical way that we live under authority is to find ways to do good works to aid those governmental authorities. That's the way verse 1 ends. It says, being subject to principalities and powers and to obey magistrates. And then it says, to be ready to every good work. That's the way we practice being in submission. Not only are we to live godly lives, though, before governmental leaders, we are also responsible to live godly with the people that are around us in the society we're at. Verse 2 says that there are some, some things there that we are to do to all men. 
Notice that's what it says at the end of the verse. We're going to do these things to all men. Well, what are we to do to all men? Verse 2 says to not speak evil of anybody. If I were to write out the Greek word translated evil here and speaking evil, you would immediately recognize that word. It's the word blaspheme. God's people do not tear down other people. Oh, we may heartily disagree with other people, but in our discussions over the issues, we never attack the person. We attack the issues. We are also not known as brawlers or contentious people. We are not known as people who live to have a fight. Rather, we strive to be at peace with all men. Even the book of Romans teaches that. Now, verse 2 goes on to describe our responsibility to society and those around us as being gentle and showing all meekness to all people. Gentleness here means being practic- in a practical way, showing moderation. You've heard of people who Uh, The phrase we use is bend over backwards to help somebody else. You know that phrase, right? Well, that's basically the idea of the word here. God's people are to go out of their way. They are to bend over backwards to help even the lost that live around them. Those are going to be open doors for us to not only display our kindness, but open the door to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. A friend, you and I both know there's not a whole lot of people going out of their way to help their neighbors these days. That, that's become a lost art. The word meekness here means to show genuine consideration to others and to humble ourselves before them as we are interacting with others. It was this kind of attributes that caused the Christians during the early years, the early centuries of the church age, it was these kind of characteristics that caused Christians to take care of their neighbors even when the plague was going on. While many people were running away from their cities because of the plague and the death, believers stayed and cared for the people that had gotten the plague, and many Christians died because they picked up the plague because they were around people they were caring for who had the plague. These traits caused these believers to take care and bend over backwards for their neighbors. And in so doing, they caused the name of Christ to be magnified and glorified. And many, even on their deathbeds with the plague, received Christ as Savior. Oh, friend, for us, evangelism is not really an event. It's a way of life. And this way of life has been commanded to us. Our churches are to remind us about this. So you and I got to ask ourselves, are we obeying the command? Tell me, when was the last time you or I bent over backwards for a lost person to help them, not because we were hoping in our soul we could tell the gospel, just because we love them enough to do it, and lo and behold, it turned out to be an open door to the gospel. Maybe that's what ought to be our ought to be our task for the day, our to-do list today. Let's find somebody who's lost. Let's bend over backwards to help meet a need and see what Christ will do to open a door. Wouldn't that be fun? Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.